Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm going to be working on this 2005 GMC Envoy. So sit back and enjoy the ride. Several issues going on. Some that are just routine maintenance and others are more serious. This is the lower control arm. This is the upper control arm. Got a ball joint here and a ball joint in here. It's a spring over shock. The knuckle right here is the tie rod. So the rack is here. So there's the knuckle loose. Take that off, set it aside. Okay, so on this vehicle, take out this bracket right here the rack will fall straight down and out of the vehicle. You don't have to fish it out. Okay, so I'm fairly certain that the engineer responsible for the bolt placement in this thing was hurt some way as a child by a mechanic. He had recommended removing this upper control arm, which then allowed you to slide the power steering lines over the top of the the tower all right there's that okay, here's the rack um i think it was leaking right here on the end the low pressure line came with a new seal and the pressure line came with o-rings so i guess it's a new design hopefully it works so i have the mounting holes lined up i have the boots about the same i have the ball joints the same. Done with the old rack. No, 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 no. When all else fails, fire. Finally, got the little booger out. Okay, so got the bolt coming through. This is a 21 millimeter nut. I'll screw that on. Get that started. Okay, so something that I found I didn't see on anyone else's video. There's a hole right here in the frame. And if you take a breaker bar with a 21 millimeter socket on it, you can reach through and get on that bolt. And then the frame itself will hold your breaker bar and allow you to tighten the nut with an impact or whatever without having to fight reaching around the frame. Like I said, it's 21 millimeter. Loud noises. All right, so that's tightened down. And then you want to torque it to 81 foot pounds. And there you go. It's got to go over and do the other side. Okay, so now we get to put the ball joints back in. Took the, the boot off of it so that the, the presser cup would fit and rest on this shoulder. It has a hole in the bottom so that the ball joint can poke through. itself has a hole also for the ball joint to come through and then a solid cap which goes on top that the ball joint fits in so basically this gives space for the ball joint to press up through your lower control arm
tank. So when you're putting this in, you want your ball joint to press up straight. And sometimes what you need to do is it'll bind up a little bit and sometimes you'll have to, you know, tap the tap your clamp a little bit, which will shock it and get it to move forward. But it should definitely go in a lot easier than it came out. Double check for straightness. coming up all right so you can see starting to come up that's what this cup is for gives a little space for the, the top of it to come through we're almost flush here so just about done for those who didn't see my video putting the bucket cylinder back on my backhoe uh, this is what a snap ring looks like this one is an outer snap ring so it spreads open goes into the groove and then closes. They have inner snap rings as well, where you would compress them, stick it inside a hole, and then they would spring out into a groove. These are snap ring pliers. They have little points on them that go into these holes. And by squeezing the handle, you open up the snap ring which makes it large enough which makes it large enough to go over the outer part and then it closes down and then you just want to make sure that that snap ring seats into the groove you take a little screwdriver or a punch just tap it down make sure it's down all the way and it should just snap in. And there we go. Okay, to put the upper ball joints in, basically the same process. Uh, these press up from down here, so you just need... Okay, so putting the, the ball joints in, in the upper, basically the same process. Uh, these are a little different where you need a longer hollow piece on top because it comes up into it.
once again you take your snap ring, snap ring pliers, open it up. and then down into the ring. And then rinse and repeat for the second one. My head was in the way. Second one up. And snap ring and smooth. So that's the uh, these control arms, steering knuckles, or whichever you want to call them. And I was smart enough that I wrote left and right on them before I moved them away from the car. So this one here is the right one, this one's the left, get them over there to the car. Now I'm putting the upper control arm back on. And I'll be back after I get that those uh, bolts in. Okay, then uh, put the spring over shock in. This is just loosely set up. I'm gonna get the axles in. Right, so that goes in. I'm gonna go around till you find the splines line up. So we got the axle in. Now I'm gonna jack up on the lower control arm to seat this knuckle on the, the new strut. And probably have to tap it a little bit here and there with a hammer just to convince it it wants to go home. like that we get that one up rinse and repeat for the other side all right now trying to put the knuckle back on
So I'm gonna get it started on the axle and then hook the lower ball joint. And maneuver the axle to line the splines up. Can get a couple threads caught as soon as possible to help you situation. The uh, ball joint did come with a new castle nut. All right, so we got those two started. So we got the, the control arm up and got that started. So we have the axle, the new spring over shock. I did go and buy new uh, sway bar links. Have to install those. So we just need to get the lower control arm jacked up so that we can get the upper ball joint into its home. And then we'll tighten down all the, all the bolts. Okay, so I got it close. And I took a pry bar, put it in between the springs, push down so that it would seat so I could get the, the bolt through the slot. Okay, we're getting this back together now. So we have this nut down here. Lower ball joint, 79 foot pounds. This one here, upper ball joint, 96 foot pounds. These bolts these bolts back in here for the upper control arm, 108 foot-pounds. The, uh, the wheel axle, once it's down on the, the wheel, we can get that torqued to 103 foot-pounds. If you remember, the steering bolt was 30 foot-pounds. The upper strut bolts up here are 50 foot, foot pounds. And then this one down here is 90 foot pounds. So we're getting that all back together. We got the new uh, wheel speed sensor in and uh, currently routing that wire. Beginning of the video, if you remember, if you remember, I said the uh, the guide pin uh, was frozen. Took an 18 millimeter socket on my impact, and I was able to break it free. However, it tore the boot, so I went to the parts store and I picked up some new boots for it. They have a a steel sleeve that I had to drive out of the drive out of the caliper bracket and uh, then this gets tapped in and now you can see my pin moves freely because it was frozen and the same one was frozen on both sides um, when I got the other side done it uh, didn't tear the boot but this side did so got that all replaced got the new brakes and yeah, so pretty much just to wrap up, um, I'm not gonna bore you with uh, tightening all the bolts and I'll come back uh, when I'm assembling the brakes. Okay, so these brakes are the most pain in the butt ones I've ever worked on. So here's one of the pads, and every pad gets two squeakers. Um, they don't come on them, 
So you have to assemble that. And then these uh, guides, they have one hook and one spring side. Um, so to slide that on, it's sometimes difficult and it doesn't like to stay. And then in the top of the caliper, it has this bracket here that um, I'm guessing helps hold the tension on the, the pads to keep them from wobbling. I don't know. I mean, I've never run across that in anything else I've ever done. So it's kind of weird setup. So to put the squeaker on, there's a little notch here that this part of the squeaker goes on. So it just slips on tight fit. And all the parts are cold because winter's coming. It is currently 29 degrees. So I have some gloves that I brought out, but I don't like wearing them because I can't feel anything. So fight and that squeaker snap down in. Now I have three more to do. And there's four, although number four is a little high. I'm gonna try and, there we go. That snapped now. It wasn't quite fully in that little notch. here there. in the northeast take a little brake lube put it on the uh, take a little brake lube put it on the caliper bracket to try and help stop rust from forming underneath the hardware just slows it down doesn't actually stop it And uh, the hook goes on the side with the pins. And then the spring side goes on the other, obviously. So that goes on like that. So there's those two. The pads are the same on both sides. And the squeakers like to try and slip underneath these brackets. So you need to be conscious of that when you're slipping the pads in. Okay, and there's that. Uh, then we 
take our rotor, slip it on backwards first, stick it on there. And for South Main Auto, and we'll just spray down the back side of the rotor, get the shipping oils off of it. Carefully, not touching the surface that we just cleaned. Flip it over. Hit the other side. And we take one lug nut. We just run that down. Run it down just to help hold the, the rotor on while we, we place the brakes. Take our caliber bracket and slide that on. And get our bolts started. Now you tighten it down to 18 millimeter. This one up here, gonna have to use wrench with. It is behaving much better. So far. We take our brake caliper. And just like on the caliper bracket, we'll hit the areas here with a little bit of lube just to help prevent rust and squeaks so any place that there's metal to metal a little bit of lube don't eat a lot it just That will slip down. Make sure your pins go in. Okay, if you see Crystal, tell her I love her. If you see Crystal, tell her we, I love her.
Alright, so you get your bracket on, I mean, you get your caliper on. Get your bolts started. You run them down. You might need to grab the, gu the guide pin from keep it from spinning. On this particular model, it's an 18 millimeter. So there's all those. Oh, we still got to finish running this ABS sensor. So we'll get that fish through. Now the, the clips that you didn't break when you were taking the old one off, so you can take off the new clips and slide them into the old ones. Anything that you did break, you just replace. in and there you go you have your new ABS cable routed in all set figured I might as well try and get this sway bar link off the way they they're supposed to come off is you take an allen wrench and that goes in the end and you take your wrench and work the nut um, just because it usually spins inside the the socket so you need to have a way to hold it some of them have flats just on the inside that you can get a wrench on so it all depends on what what style uh, ball joint you have so we'll see if this works Right. have the wrong size allen wrench I'll be back something you can do too if it doesn't work is you can pop this joint off and then grab the ball with a pair of vice grips that will also work um, you can take a die grinder and cut the bolt off so you, you have other options if you can't get it off the quote unquote proper way All right, so couldn't find the proper size Allen wrench. Take it apart. So I opted for the die grinder.
So as you can see, this upper one isn't quite as straightforward. Probably should have cut it off prior to putting all this back on, if I was thinking. Um, but I wasn't, so makes my life a little more difficult. I uh, wasn't able to get in behind here with the die grinder. There's the axle and everything's in the way, so I sliced it off where I could. And now I'm nibbling away so that the bolt will fall through. And there, there's that. All right, so this new ball joint has flats on the inside. It doesn't use an Allen wrench on, on the end. So that has flats here for a wrench. And then you would tighten down your nut. Makes life a little easier. Okay, so on, uh, on mine, the inner <clears throat> Alright, so on mine, the inner wrench was 17 millimeter, outside was 22. Got that all situated and tightened down. Everything is installed, torqued down. So now, we we'll move on to just put the wheel on, which I'm sure you've seen a thousand times. So. Um, we also have these hydraulic power steering lines. Um, probably gonna use some zip ties and tie them down just like these two holes here you can't put the bracket on with both hoses with both lines on from outside you have to do it from the top and in order to do it from the top you have to remove the body of the car so um, that's not gonna happen and yeah, so just a lot of buttoning up to do with the, like I said, with the power steering lines, making sure once more that everything is tight and copacetic and uh, we're good to go. Okay, something that you want to do before you uh, set everything down is you want to try and get your alignment close. So you look down the, the body of the, the car and try and make the, the wheels parallel to the, the body. And that way, it's not too terrible when you actually go to get it aligned. It's not skidding down the road. So thanks for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, and comment. Um, and we'll see you on the next one. God bless.